Jeff Whiteman here, just announced and coached the world champion in the 1500 meters. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I feel, I feel all right, actually. Uh, I'm getting a hard time off him for saying, don't forget the Commonwealth in 10 days. He wants to enjoy it tonight before his flight home. But yeah, it was good. It's unusual and different. And I don't know that your guys were tipping him. I think there was a lot. If you'd done one of your polls, I think it would have said Jakob, Chariot, uh, Josh ahead of Jake. And that was fine. You know, a lot of people soaking up the attention. But I thought he was in good nick going into it. Had yeah. a chance. What was the strategy going in? So I, I said you could probably hang back for fourth, fifth, sixth and get a bronze. You know, that's likely. But take a risk like you did in Tokyo, go with the break, and it might come off this time. And, and I think that's exactly what happened. You know, there was a break, he did cover it, and he did have the wheels in the home straight, which he should have. He's a 144-1, 800 metre guy. And, but he, he's come into this in the form of his life, really, and it's, how often does that happen? You've got to take a chance, take risks, because sometimes it pays off like that. Well, are you, when he takes the lead at 200 though, are you thinking, oh, is this too early? Or are you thinking this is the time to strike? So over the years, that's been his favorite point to hit the front, whether it's been in an 800 or a, a 1500, somewhere between 150 and 200 to go. So when he hit the front and he's told his sprints coach, Laura Turner, if I'm in front coming into straight, I love it. I can get my form going. Uh, so I was thinking, well, they're good behind him, but he's good in the home straight. So he may be okay here. Yeah. It was a little bit like, um, Rabat, where he won the Diamond League in Rabat. That was like 150 to go and it, it, it worked, so, yeah. yeah. What was the biggest change you guys made after Tokyo? Because I've read that he wanted to add more strength work to be yeah. stronger, to be able to run 329 and, you know, in championship yeah. final. So, so 1500's changed, as you know. I mean, Centrovitz won in Rio 350 with a 51 last lap. If, if they were all run like that, Jake would have a good chance every time out. But he's now had Doha, Tokyo, where it's been run at 3.30 pace, third race in four days. So the day that he finished 10th in Tokyo, which was kind of a race too far for him, the only conversation we had was, it's no good just being the best 800 meter guy at the bell. You've got to have something at 3,000, 5,000. So all of the winter was directed towards over distance. And so he ran a 7.37 in uh, New York in the indoor Grand Prix with New Balance. And, and that was the strength that he needed. The ability to go three rounds and still be to be able to position well. Um, so he's had, a, he's had a good year, almost no interruptions, but it's just, he's, he's rubbish at cross country. I've tried cross country and he, with his stride, he gets nothing out of grass. So we have to do road or indoor track. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, I think he did a, the Scottish national 4K cross country and he was 14th. Yeah. Yeah, so cross country is not, not a good one for him. Is the training different? Do you up his miles? Or Slightly. Is he doing longer workouts? Slightly. So he, he touched 80 miles a week a couple of times. Uh, his long run goes to about 15. Uh, we can be out doing hills for over an hour. And this so is it, different from previous years? No, it's just an incremental 5 or 10%. Uh, and, and maybe a little bit more tempo. So some sort of uh, progression runs on a Thursday that he might not have done in the past. So he's still 60, 70 miles a week. but slightly more winter emphasis on over distance yeah and how do you balance the emotions because i believe you know when you're calling the race because i think you've said in the past you like calling his races because you can sort of stay in it and not get as you know freaking out as much like how do you balance it when you're so i like i like doing 1500 yeah. and i know because i was asked about it at the world indoors in birmingham are you sure you can do this impartially yes i believe i can and the inference was if you don't you're not doing it again so I've, I've, I've almost gone too much the other way with being neutral. But I don't, I don't want, you know, uh, parents and coaches and family of other athletes saying, oh, you were calling your son. I'm, I'm there for everybody. I'm there for the crowd. I'm there for the whole field. And, and if I don't, then I won't get 1500 again. And I love doing 1500. Yeah. But was this, so was this an easy race to call or was it diff more difficult than normal? It was all right. It was okay. Because, I mean, uh, really for three minutes, it was the same as most 1500s. It was only the last 30 seconds that it... That it changed. Do you know what? In uh, London 2012, I had the choice of whether I wanted to do the men's eight or the men's 15. And I chose the men's 15 uh, and I chose the women's 15, which were shockers. And I didn't get to call the Rudisha race out of choice, but I've still stuck with 1500. So, so I must be mad. Is it, well, this has got to be number one of the races you've called now though, right? I think so. Yeah. I'm looking forward to watching it again. Cause it'll be like that forever. You'll, you'll always have that moment with 150 to go where you think, has he gone too soon or are they coming back? And then it'll be the relief every time you watch it that no, no, he's okay. He's okay. okay. Thanks, Thank you, John. Jeff. Thank Congrats. You.